Heidi here with the Ann Arbor District Library and today's program is about image transfer. So there's a lot of different ways to get images transferred from a page onto objects such as a tile, a piece of wood, or a canvas, uh, or people use them for art books in lots of various ways. I'm going to discuss a method using acrylic medium. And uh, it's a method I developed a few years back and I'll show you some examples here in a moment. So interestingly, as I went back to research how I did this, I couldn't find any of the tutorials where I learned this from, so uh, somehow I developed it. So I found some other methods that people are using that I'm going to talk about as well that, that are just a little bit different from the way I do it and might be the way that you find if you start to Google around and you know look on YouTube uh, for other ways to make these image transfers happen. It's a lot of fun. Uh, the important thing is that you need to have a laser jet or photocopy image. The inkjet printing just doesn't work this as well. And I'll show you that in a moment. So let's get over to the document camera. So here is an inkjet uh, produced image and it's fine. It's just a little bit dull. Uh, not a, The detail isn't as great on that one I, uh, as opposed to this being the inkjet. And so it's a matter of how the ink stays more on top of the paper. So it's it works better for the photo transfers. You can try to use the inkjet, although it does start to smear and blur when you're trying to rub away the paper, which you're going to learn about soon. Um, so it's possible to do, but I think for your first few times out playing with this technique, it's best just to go with what's surely going to work, which is the inkjet. You can see how that's a little bit shinier and uh, it just has a, has a better quality. Just regular copy paper, nothing fancy there. Okay. And so just to talk about some examples of, of how I got started with doing this or why, um, I was doing a lot of drawings and I wanted to find a way to get them onto objects for people to enjoy instead of it being just a drawing. So I transferred them onto a ceramic tile. Now this is just a regular old ceramic tile that I bought at the hardware store. The kind of thing you would use for you know tiling a bathroom or backsplash. It is not especially shiny though. This is more of a dull matte surface. A shiny surface could be done but it just wasn't really the look I wanted. And I, th I think the dull surface uh, is a little more acceptable or accepting of the medium to make this work. Um, another example, this is the same image but on a wooden box and I finished it with a satin varnish which is why it's kind of shiny like that. Um, here would be another one that I did where you know I just took a wooden box and I did some distressing with some inks and then applied my image to it. So going a little bit further, I'm going to show you one that I did with the inkjet, and here it did work, but it does look kind of cloudy, um, it isn't as detailed, and you can see on the sides here is where the ink was starting to smear, and even in this background, uh, it was smearing and the image was even starting to remove as I was rubbing the paper away. And then this one is the inkjet. So, and again, this is just a black and white image. It doesn't have grays, but you can see just it's much more distinct, much more uh, high contrast. And then these are just an unfinished clay tile from some project that I never finished when I was working in pottery. So it's just clay, uh, but you can see the difference there in the, in the quality. And it depends on what you're going for. These are not going to be necessarily perfect transfers. It just does better with having that inkjet. So the other supplies we use, um, a lot of people just use this, the matte medium solely on its own, or the gel medium. And they have different qualities. The matte medium is liquid. This is a gel, so it's a thicker, uh, it's a thicker medium. I like to use them together. So I prep my surface with the matte medium and then I use the matte gel on the image that I'm going to transfer. And I found that that worked well, especially with the working with like the clay tiles. Uh, you, you can do it on a canvas and I'll demonstrate that one for you, but I don't feel the result was as good. Um, the one thing too with the gel, I feel like I just I get better coverage. 
So here is one that I did with just the matte medium and some of it didn't stick down. Uh, some of the image, you know, kind of came up or just, you know, I, I really do my best to smooth it down so there's no air pockets, but somehow, you know, that just started to come away. And I think that's partially just because it doesn't have as thick of a medium to, you know, keep all of the image in place, but it still works. And uh, there's still some paper bits that I could probably rub away a little better on this, but just to give you an idea, you know, what one looks like. Um, the other thing I found by comparison is this is one that was done with just the matte medium, and then this is one that I did with the gel. And it just, to me, and they were pretty similar quality as far as the, the photo image or the, the inkjet image, sorry, the laser printed image. Um, as far as the tone and brightness, but it just isn't, this is a little flatter. To me, this seems to have a little more richness to it. So that's another reason why I like to use this kind of double step method. But it does really work well on materials that are not porous. So working on a canvas, you can get away with that. But on a non-porous tile, it's good to prep the surface, I feel, to give it something, you know, to grab onto. All right. All right, so next is, I'm going to show you, uh, first just using with only the matte medium. Um, what I'm using today to transfer to is just this uh, quality artist canvas panel. Um, and I cut these up. Uh, this is an 8x10. I didn't want to have that big of a size. You can also purchase these in smaller sizes, but I just had this, so I decided to go with using what I had on hand and just using a utility knife. I cut it down as it works for at least doing the demos. The edges are a bit unfinished, but that's all right. Okay, so using the matte medium, and I have poured some off into a little dish because I find that's easier to work with it that way. And I'm just going to use a foam brush today. Sometimes I use a regular brush. doesn't really matter too much. Uh, brush strokes don't use, really come through too strongly in the end and if they're there, you know they're there a little bit I don't know I don't worry about it or let it bother me so first of all I'm going to spread some of this lightly down onto the little square tile of canvas and it doesn't need to be real thick but a just nice coating making sure that I get it all over the canvas completely While we're at it, I'm going to prep my my other piece, um, just because for the other method I like it to be a little bit tacky and dry a bit, so not just real. I don't want it, I don't want it to be freshly applied for when I use the gel medium in addition to the matte medium. So I'm just going to brush this on now, and we'll let that set off to the side and, and dry. Not for very long. It's maybe 10 minutes. Depends on how humid the day is. All right, so we're sticking with the matte medium. I'm going to now get some on my brush. And as you could tell from the examples, this does dry clear. You can see it, though. It's a little bit white, opaque, when you're applying it. Okay, so I'm just getting that spread all over. And I'm going to set this aside. Now I'm just going to place the paper onto the canvas. Now, sometimes, depending on what you're doing, like when I was doing those boxes, I needed the image to be in a certain direction, a certain orientation. So you might want to indicate that on the back with an arrow or something so you know that you're laying it 
in the direction that you would like. So the next thing to do is to smooth it down. I have a brayer which I can use to gently roll, kind of moving from the center out. Uh, sometimes I'll put a piece of wax paper down actually in between so that I don't get this medium all over my nice brayer. <laughs> because some of it does squeeze out. Uh, you could use a squeegee. I happen to have tools left over from my clay days that are uh, used for smoothing the clay. They're called ribs and they come in different kind of thicknesses. This one's a lot more bendy than this one. And I'll just use that to kind of gently make sure I'm smoothing this down, trying my best to remove any air bubbles, making sure there's really good contact between this paper and the surface that I'm transferring to. And you can see a little bit that it, it looks kind of, this is how it looks when it's wet. It's not an op opaque piece of paper. Interesting with this method, it's faster. You don't have to wait for it to be dry to start peeling the paper off. In fact, I think it probably works a little bit better if you don't wait until it's fully dry. Uh, the other method, because the gel is it's thicker, um, it's a little softer, you have to make sure that that tile or that paper is very dry before removing it. Otherwise, sometimes you start to smudge and smear and dig in to your image. For example, I have this one and there's some areas where I, I went too soon, it was too soft and I kind of smudged it out of the way. So, but you can also make that work for you. You know, maybe you start to dig in on purpose and, and make it, you know, look distressed depending on what you're, what you're using it for. You can get a pretty clean image, but for the most part, just be prepared not to anticipate that it's going to be absolutely, you know, photograph perfect. There should be some variance in, in how it appears. Some, some funkiness. Okay, so we prepped this one, and we need to paint the matte gel onto the other. So I'll do that now. I'm going to use this image that I took in Grand Rapids during Art Prize a couple of years ago. I don't remember what he titled this piece, but it's a sculptural piece installation by Mark Chatterley. So I found that in my photos and thought it would look interesting. Transferred in this method. So I'll kind of clean off my brush and use this. So you can see now, this is a lot thicker. Um, it's kind of like a custard thickness. And this is the gel uh, matte medium. And you can get it in different, um, it can be you know shiny as well, but I just prefer the medium matte. Okay, and we will just spread this on. You can see how much thicker that is going on. Do want to try to keep it even, so I'm going to keep moving it around. Sometimes I do leave a bit of a border to have to work with. So you have a place to touch. <laughs> Didn't today though, going all the way to the edge. And you don't have to put this on the entire canvas. You could do this as an accent on an really fun accent for you know a painting. There's a lot of different ways you can use these transfers. Okay. I'm just Probably overworking it a little bit, but just making sure I have a really nice coating on there. Okay, now I'm gonna lift that off. Go over here to my tile, which of course has some kind of a cat hair on it, because that's what happens. It's pretty tacky now and dried. You can see it's kind of shiny, and I'm just gonna lay this on. 
And then I just start with my finger a lot of times smoothing it out. Those orange tiles that I had, they were a concave surface, so that was a little challenging to get it down. And I think I did have a couple air pockets on one of them. Let's find that wax paper. This way I can keep my brayer clean. Alright, I feel pretty good about the adhesion there. And we're just going to set that off to the side to dry. For now, I'm going to go back to this one. It's been a couple of minutes. Can't really see much difference in if it's dry, but I'm going to start just by lifting at one of the corners. The nice thing is if you buy these at the right size, you don't have to worry about accidentally peeling off your canvas. Okay. So, gently pull the paper away. You just have to be careful since it is still wet. You don't want to rub too hard. So I'm just trying to see what will easily lift away right now. Okay, so not too much. Let's see if I can just start to gently rub some of the paper away. And be really gentle about, and this can take some time, Sometimes you have to come back to it. And make sure I'm not rubbing off the wrong thing. Okay, so this is ready. I'm just going to spritz it a little bit. Actually, I'm going to just spritz my hands using just a little bit of water. Dampen my fingers just a bit. Kind of work it around start to dissolve the paper. It's coming off pretty well. A little bit there at the edge where the image didn't quite adhere. I'm just working on getting all the white fuzz away. Oops, see if I rubbed a little bit too hard there and I started to remove the image. Oops. why I prefer to use my fingers. Some people might use like a sponge or a rag, but I find the most control just using my fingers. Okay, and I'll just keep working on this and we will wait for the other one to dry. And okay, so this is feeling pretty good, pretty dry now. Uh, I used to wait overnight to remove these. I think when I was working on the tile, again, because it's not as absorbent of a surface, it would take longer. But this feels pretty good, pretty safe to start working with. So uh, my method, some people may use a damp cloth to set on here. You want to re you just basically want to get the paper wet again uh, to be able to start rubbing, rubbing it away, making it kind of pulpy. Uh, but I prefer to just use a spray bottle and I use a pretty fine mist.
getting that damp. Let it kind of absorb and just really gently start rubbing. Just like last time. And the paper starts to come away. And as you start to remove more and more of the image, you just kind of have to be gentle. Sometimes move away from it because you don't want to keep wetting it. You want to just work with it slowly. So you get it too wet, then it really just it doesn't doesn't come off as well. And it will take a few times. You might think you're done, and then as it dries, you'll see a bit of a white haze. Your fingers maybe. Sometimes as I get get to the finer areas I don't spray right on the object. I'll like I showed you before I believe. I'll just kind of spray my fingers, get them a little bit wet for working. This is pretty nice uh, ambidextrous activity. Although I still feel more confident with my right hand. Even though really it's just rubbing and just feeling that paper starting to come up and you will start to notice a difference in texture once the paper is pretty much moved away it won't, you won't find it feeling almost kind of like a little bit furry I'll just keep working on this Okay, so there's still some area here that, well, first of all, I started to, that came off a little bit. It wasn't stuck all the way down, probably. Uh, there's still a little bit of a fuzz, just kind of gently going into it. But it's mostly there. And you'll just feel it. Like I said, it'll feel kind of furry uh, as opposed to being smooth. Once, once all that paper's gone, you know, that's just the surface of the acrylic medium. So, but there you have it. So we have, you know, a couple different ways to try. You can just go ahead, like I was saying before, you can just try using only the matte medium. Although I do recommend if you're working on any kind of surface like a wood or especially a clay tile, uh, the clay tile, it's good to have it primed because it's such, uh, as it's especially an unfinished matte f kind of finish on a clay tile, it's so absorbent. Um, and it's good to just kind of have this down there as a primer. Put it down, let it dry so it's tacky, but not all the way dry. And then you would put your image down that you painted with the matte gel. So if you have any questions, please feel free to leave those in the comments and just have fun with this. You know, you can use other images too. It doesn't have to necessarily be, you know, your photograph. You can take drawings and just get a copy of it. That's really fun. Remember though, if there's any kind of text or if you want it to be, um, you know, in a certain orientation that it's going to be a mirror image doing this process. It, it flips the image. So if you have text, you're going to have to reverse it. Um, when you, you know, when, to, to make sure that it reads properly. So even now, as this is drying while I've been talking, you can see a little bit of that fuzz is starting to show up. I just want to go back in. Okay, so just kind of take your time with it. Be patient. As it starts to, especially being on this canvas, I'm noticing it's, it's getting a bit damp again from spraying it, so I'm just going to let it sit, let it dry a little bit more, and then I'll come back 
maybe a couple hours tomorrow and uh, you know work on some more of the getting more of that fuzz off of there. Right, well thank you for joining me and I hope you enjoyed learning about this process of image transfer using the acrylic medium. If you have any questions you can leave them in the comments. Please like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. There's lots of great content, and you can find what's coming up by visiting the aadl.org website, and we have all our events. We're starting to list them in the calendar, so you can click on the calendar view and see what's coming up for the day for you to watch and learn and enjoy. All right, stay safe, everybody, and have a great day.